Hello and welcome to a very exciting episode of The Chair System because today we are going to learn what these shapes really mean. For the last few weeks you've been learning this chair, this chair, this chair, and of course the bridges. Which are all very important but they don't really tell you what these notes are all about. You see, part of the reason I did this, and believe me, I debated a lot over whether or not I would show you the context of these chairs up front, or if I would show you the shapes first. Part of the reason I did this is that because although most of my viewers are probably going to be people who have been playing guitar for years and want a new and interesting way of improvising, I am hoping that some of the people watching are people who have never played before and will learn to play this way first. It's a really interesting kind of experiment for me because I largely learned this way. Even though I had learned chord shapes and I had learned box shapes, I didn't really get into fully improvising until I learned these shapes. And so this is actually the way I see the guitar now, and I will be very curious to see what it's going to be like if someone sees the guitar like this as well, especially if it's their first way to see the guitar. Just kind of an interesting experiment. So, let's get started. First of all, what this shape is really about is about intervallic playing. Now, I know that probably sounds like a thousand dollar word, but all it really means is the relationships that all the notes have to the root. That's, that's really all it is. So, when you make a chair based on this G, for instance, you will know, because of the chair, that this is your first. This is your second. This is your third, your fifth, and your sixth. First, second, third, fifth, sixth. First, second, third, fifth, sixth. First, second, third, fifth, sixth. So anywhere on the fretboard that you build a chair off a note, you will automatically know the relationships. Now, don't worry about all five of those notes. For the moment, we are just going to worry about the triad. The triad is the most important three notes in any scale. Your first, your third, and your fifth. First, third, fifth. First, third, fifth. Now, yes, there are going to be repeats of these notes up in this area and in this area, so you're kind of reaching these notes in the most difficult way. And here it's going to be kind of tricky. Further down, it's going to be a little easier. But the reason you're doing this is because you're stretching yourself. You're somewhat purposely doing it in the most difficult way possible so that then when you learn where other notes of the triad are, you can add them in very easily. You see, if you've been learning to play by boxes, you probably already know that your fingers have a tendency to go in a very particular pattern. And you just get used to playing them in that way. And the real advantage to this, because you have to move your hand at least a little bit in order to hit all of these notes, it forces you to look at the fretboard more three-dimensionally. So as you get the rest of the pattern, you'll start playing more like this instead of playing like this. It's not just for making you play diagonally. It's for making you play three-dimensionally. So what I want you to do right now is use these chairs, the same chairs I'm using, or move them to another part of the fretboard. It doesn't really matter, but just work with your first thirds and fifths. You've 
probably heard other people tell you how incredibly important the triad is, but just being able to look at the fretboard and just pick them out is really going to do so much for you. It's hard to describe until you really start improvising, but it will. It really, really will. And then you'll learn, like the second, and the sixth, and noodle. Just noodle. I know, like I said in the last episode, I know a lot of people have bad stuff to say about noodling, but I think that there's two kinds of people who really have a problem with noodling. Either people who have been playing so long that they've forgotten why you noodled in the first place, and people who just, just have become stuck and don't really want to do things any other way. Because noodling for me, or at least particularly when I was first learning this system, noodling for me was very much a way to feel out the fretboard. Because what you're doing when you're noodling is not only having your fingers learn where notes are and expanding where those notes are, but it's also training your head to go, oh, that's what that sounds like. Oh, so if I do this, and I do this, I'm getting the exact same effect by doing the same thing in different places and in different octaves. It's just the kind of thing you have to make your brain do so that eventually your brain can do it subconsciously. When you think about it, notes can only do a few things. Once you've played a note, you can either play that note again, or I guess not play anything, and you can go up and you can go down. And all improvising is really is learning exactly how far up and how far down you're going to go with your next note. That's all it is. And eventually your brain starts understanding this. So, noodle, noodle like crazy. you do that, the more it is going to lock it into your brain. I very much look forward to the next episode where we're going to get deeper into the actual context of all of these notes instead of just looking at shapes. I hope you very much enjoyed this episode and I will see you on the next one.